on CC. We have Rajesh Du with us. He's the head for blockchain competency tech Mahindra. And also we have with us Anirudh Rastogi. He is the founder for Ikigai Law. I'm very interested in having this conversation from a legal aspect and from a tech aspect while we look at this big, big blockbuster Monday coming our way. Uh, hi and welcome to CC. If I can take the first question to Anirudh over there. You know, the Indian government has been sitting on a crypto regulation bill for over a year now, as we know. Now, meanwhile, since the Supreme Court lifted the ban as well, uh, two-year, you know, banking ban as well, crypto, you know, since it's been since March 2020, investments in crypto has really soared. And we are now at a situation where finally there is going to be some dialogue. Share with us the initial understanding of what will be the immediate steps that follow. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. So firstly, uh, of course, any any attempts at consultation with the industry and experts is welcome. And this is something as the industry we've been literally asking for the last many years, including, uh, in, in fact, if I could share anecdotally, uh, during the Supreme Court hearings where um, uh, we were uh, you know, lucky to be representing uh, the exchanges uh, and the wider industry before the Supreme Court, uh, at some point, the Supreme Court literally uh, you know, pulled up the RBI for uh, not paying heed to the many representations that were already made to the bank and um, uh, you know so so the, the desire for consultations uh, is something that has been articulated by the industry by the court uh, and despite that you know that has not happened since uh, up until now so a very welcome change hmm. uh, i i uh, think uh, you know uh, also we, uh, while it's the, the the finance committee which is uh, going to be looking at this issue, I, I think we uh, uh, need to also look at cryptocurrency and blockchain from a from a technological lens, uh, and uh, think of regulation of uh, cryptocurrencies from that perspective as well. It is not just about payments. I think the misnom cryptocurrency is a misnomer and gets confused with being a currency. There are many many applications uh, of cryptocurrencies that are not widely understood sometimes uh, by the government. And exactly that reason why you need to consult with people who are pretty much right. entrenched. And different forms in which government is also engaged. And if you see blockchain used by so many governments now to solve different problems in different ways, from certificates to vaccinations, etc. So there is really aspects of uh, a blockchain and crypto that the government is looking at positively at least. But let me take the next question to Rajesh. You know, just last week, the industry had taken out a big ad calling out to the government to provide regulatory guidance. They wanted, they also highlighted tens of millions of Indians really who've invested. Just to quote that figure again to our viewers, $80 billion. That's about $6 trillion INR in crypto, right? That's according to that ad that we all saw. This backdoor conversation has been happening for a while. How big is this meeting going to be, according to you? Yeah, this is going to be the most defining uh, moment in the history of the cryptocurrency in India, because the first time the various constituents of the industry are going to come together from the lawmakers to people in the industry, people who are providing services, the experts and analysts and investors. For a long, long time, the regulatory climate has been very, very silent. Uh, if you look at some of the countries, they've taken a firm view, it's either banned or allowed. But uh, in, in, with respect to India, the regulatory climate has been a little bit uh, silent. So now it's, as I said, it's going to be a defining moment because mm. things will come out very, very easily. And a lot of uh, gray areas that are there with regards to mm. investment, for example, there's a common misconception that holding cryptocurrency is illegal. No, it isn't. It isn't illegal. And if I make good amount of money in uh, cryptocurrency trade, how do I treat those uh, profits? Do I apply short-term capital gains, yes. long-term capital gains? Yeah. It is not very clear. In what income tax bracket should these mm. be taxed? Are they called as the digital assets, or they are uh, tokens, or they are coins? It's it's not going to it's not going to be a legal tender for sure, mm. but it is going to be either a digital asset or under the category of token. So, what is the tax rate that will be applicable? And for instance, even trading on exchanges, uh, if I take an analogy with regards to the stock markets, when you buy stocks, uh, you pay uh, in addition to the brokerage fee, you also pay, uh, sorry, you also pay tax, right? It, hmm. it could be a, 
security tax or it could be a service tax those categories are also very very silent at this I point see. of time hmm. so hmm. all these aspects are going to come up in this particular meeting right so anirudh can you shed more light on then what exactly is the framework the broad framework that we are talking about uh, are we looking at different types of crypto assets being created and then different heads etc I think um, it, it is well. There is there is a little lack of clarity yet, and I think mm. uh, it's, it's still the government still has to make up its mind on how it wants to regulate, and that's where this these consultations are very helpful. Uh, but uh, broadly speaking, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, these these are some of some challenging questions, right? How do you actually categorize mm. cryptocurrencies? You regulate them as an asset you regulate them as securities you regulate them as as something as an you know something quite quite different and create a new class a new category for, yeah. to regulate these. Uh, and uh, it is best be given the nature of this technology which is also um, you know evolving very rapidly um, uh, that we as Naveen Surya was also commenting uh, it is important to have a self regulatory framework or uh, you know uh, which can work closely with a regulatory uh, overarching regulatory supervision uh, but uh, a regulate self regulatory framework which can which can be nimble uh, and which can evolve as the technology and the industry are evolving right I, I, I'm running out of time, but I quickly want to give in the last word to Rajesh as well on this categories and the broad framework that we're looking at. Sorry, say that again. I didn't uh, catch Rajesh, that. Rajesh, your thoughts on what exactly should be the framework when you look at the categories in which crypto, uh, whether it's a taxation, etc. What exactly should be the framework there? Oh, okay. So from a framework perspective, it should be it should look at uh, different uh, aspects within the digital currencies. Uh, for instance, if you look at the application of digital currencies and application of these tokens, you have various categories, right? You have uh, social tokens, you have utility tokens, you have tokens which are collectibles, then you have uh, tokens which are being used for online storage. Uh, and there are tokens which are being uh, used for decentralized finance. So the the regulatory framework should be looking at all these aspects and in terms of what are the various uh, tax rates that would be applicable to the users. Mm -hmm. And also the regulation yeah. framework should also uh, look into the uh, protection aspects. For instance, I, ins uh, I invest in, let's say, a central ex uh, in a mm -hmm. centralized exchange. Very important. And I have yeah. a holding. And then what happens if the centralized exchange goes down? So, so if I draw an another analogy with regards to the bank deposits, they are secured to a certain extent, and there is a very, very clear regulatory framework around it. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, can a similar regulatory framework can be uh, extended when mm -hmm. it comes to holding of these uh, cryptocurrencies right. by those centralized exchanges? Right. So some of those aspects, they definitely mm -hmm. need to look at. Well, safe to say we won't be getting any answers at the end of the meeting perhaps, but the conversation has begun. I think that's the big takeaway. And then let's see where we move forward in this journey. Thank you both for joining us on CC this week. That's